Hello, everyone. I'm Shimon Shkuri, and today I have uh, my partners and colleagues here with me uh, to talk a little bit about 2020. First, Victor Sozio, uh, Mike Tortorici, and uh, Sean Kelly, all of which will tell you about some pockets of strength that we, we've seen in 2020, although 2020 has been a tough year. And the first packet of strength was in the affordable housing world. Uh, Vic, what did we see in 2020? So it seems to be a recurrent theme throughout this pandemic in that the affordable housing asset class has been performing very well. And, and it's really amazing if you think about it, you know, in a time with such low transaction volume, there have been, you know, some relatively larger transactions that have occurred at very healthy pricing metrics. So, you know, just to talk about a few, you had Cherry Street, which CIM and LM sold to related at above 400 million at a price that translates to a, a sub 5% cap. Uh, cap rate. We have a project-based Section 8 asset in the Bronx that was purchased at a, a hair above 300 a, a door, and some other assets in both Bronx and Brooklyn, you know, from Omni companies that sold and, and Phoenix Realty that sold that, again, at healthy metrics. So what it's really telling us is that there is new and diverse buckets of capital that continue to be attracted to the downside protection and stability that these assets provide. Um, and now these are sold data points, Shimon, right? And, and as you know, we have now live deals, both small and large affordable asset uh, housing assets that have went under contract. So this just reinforces the point uh, that this is a, a, a product type that continues to perform well. Definitely. And what's interesting about the multifamily world is that we've seen improvement in the rental market in the past uh, few months, right, Mike? Yeah, it's uh, it's been really encouraging. I've spoken with several property owners, uh, building managers, residential brokers, um, who were very concerned at the end of November, uh, but we're happy to report that um, there's been a real bounce back in leasing activity uh, over the last few months. Some of the strongest leasing they've had in, in quite a while in what are traditionally um, very weak months for leasing. Um, and rents are down. Uh, a big draw is, uh, is the affordability that tenants can now take advantage of. It's bringing young people back. Um, and it's happening throughout the city. It's happening in Manhattan. It's happening in Brooklyn. The student housing sector uh, is still struggling through, through COVID, but um, uh, enough landlords have dropped the rents where they are filling those units and are optimistic about the, uh, about the fall. Um, another thing I've heard uh, is that some people uh, are actually moving back to the city um, and looking at purchases at, at, uh, at residential properties and condos in Manhattan. Some we haven't heard in a while. People that have gone to Westchester or the suburbs realize it's not for them. They're start, starting to make inroads and, and again, trying to take advantage of pricing right now. So hopefully um, we can build on that strength as we get out of COVID and uh, uh, reemerge stronger. Yes. And another pocket of uh, strength has been industrial. Many businesses that needed warehousing uh, did well during the pandemic. And Sean, what did we see in 2020 um, in that specific sector that made us believe this is a strong sector, uh, although uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic? Sure, so uh, great question, Shimon. Uh, we saw a lot of large transactions um, and it was actually but throughout the five boroughs. Uh, we saw several large transactions in the Bronx, Queens, um, Staten Island and Brooklyn. In Brooklyn alone, along the Red Hook and Sunset Park waterfront, there's roughly 3 million feet under development, um, being anchored by uh, the UPS redevelopment, um, Amazon signing a couple of leases, and the redevelopment of Sunset Industrial. And interestingly enough, most of the discussions surrounding the industrial space are distribution, proximity to Manhattan, pro proximity to densely populated areas, um, but also noteworthy is the sale of the Silver Cup Studios, uh, which is going to be redeveloped um, for film production. Great. So that's so we've seen uh, industrial, we've seen specialty use, uh, we've seen uh, Amazon uh, taking uh, space, industrial space in the boroughs, and we also seen Amazon and other technology companies taking some space during the pandemic, although the office market soft taking some space in Manhattan specifically. Uh, Mike, what we've seen there? Yeah, it's a great point, Shimon. Um, while other, uh, other investors may have been hesitant to go into office, uh, some of the largest and, and fastest growing tech companies 
um, have taken advantage of this period and really expanded their footprints either through leases or or big purchases. Um, Facebook leased 730,000 square feet of space in the Farley Post Office. Uh, TikTok took another 232,000 square feet at, uh, at, at the Durst organizations four times square. Apple has expanded their footprint. Netflix has expanded their footprint. Um, so I, I think that that tells you that the long-term viability of New York as a global center of, uh, of commerce and culture and growth is, is here to stay. Um, and I think even you know on the multifamily, the industrial and the office side, we've seen some institutional investors um, taking a look now at where property values are, seeing that strength and looking to make similar moves. So, um, so some, some green shoots of optimism coming from the office and the institutional investor sector. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. Uh, so we have some pockets of strength in, in the affordable world, affordable housing world, industrial, and in the office market in the, in the way of technology. Thank you, everybody. And uh, let's keep going on 2021.